Hello, in this video, let's do the supply side of elasticity. Okay, so there is a elasticity to most supply curves, right? So uh, just eyeballing this, uh, this one here, uh, right about here, this is pretty inelastic, and over here, this is pretty elastic, all right? So as the price goes from 25 cents to 50 cents, we see a big change in quantity supplied. But as the price goes up towards a dollar, we see a much smaller change, and there's some explanations for that. Okay, uh, this is from a couple years ago. This is a uh, 1902 Honus Wagner baseball card. Oh, it's a tobacco card. And I'll let you think about that for a second, right? So, what what do you think the price is? There's really uh, you know, very few of these. Um, you're not able to make more. Okay, and the the bidding here was started at twenty twenty three thousand dollars, right? And you do get free shipping with that, so hooray, right? And you could buy it now, and there really aren't very many of these, right? So essentially, uh, if we were going to draw the supply curve for this, um, it's going to look. Let me make sure I get the pen here. I wonder what a pencil does. Let's find out. Okay, pretty much the same thing. Uh, if only I could draw straight there. Okay, and so we've got price, we've got quantity, and in this case, there's, you know, let's say there's four of these cards, right? So if they're selling for $22,000, that's going to be the price. If they're selling for $50,000, that's the price there. That's supposed to be a K, uh, you know, $100,000 up to a million dollars, right? So would they sell these four cards for $22,000? Would they sell them? Fifty thousand dollars. They sell them for a hundred thousand dollars. Basically, we're going to have basically this perfectly elastic supply curve, right? And this is when basically I, I can't do anything about the quantity supplied. I would like to, right? I would like to, as the price goes up, make more, but I just can't because it's a hundred-year-old card, right? So that's perfectly elastic supply. Now the the opposite of that, I should probably show you here, um, is also true, right? We see. A lot of these. Ah. Oh, wait, there we go. Now we're, now we're getting getting somewhere here. Sort of. All right. Anyway, uh, here's price. And so uh, here we have sort of very upward sloping, right? So as the price is going up, uh, I can produce a lot more, right? So kind of ah, ah. try to do that, right? I'm just going to draw a straight line here. So this is, say, call it one dollar, and this is dollar fifty. Right. So that's a fifty cent increase here, and this is going to get us a much bigger percentage in quantity supplied. Right. The firms are going to want to try to supply more in this market. Right. So this would be, you know, some sort of easy product to to produce. So let's get back to this here. All right, so there's old Honus Wagner. Okay, so the formula here for elasticity of supply is basically the same, uh, except on the on the numerator, you're just going to change it to quantity supplied rather than quantity demanded, and there's the percent change in price on the on the uh, numerator. So basically, this is measuring how easy is it to change production, right? So if uh, that number is over one, it's going to be pretty easy to change production, right? Because they they will actually do it, right? So um, and if the number is less than one, it's it's relatively harder, like the Honus Wagner card, right? Well, a lot harder. So very similar formula. So what are some determinants that go into this? So one is how easy is it uh, to acquire raw materials? How easy is it to store the raw materials? What's going on with the inputs, right? If it's really hard to get those inputs, it's going to be harder to change your supply at different prices, right? If it's a uranium-based product, it can be quite quite harder. Okay? Uh, if the product is very complex, has a lot of parts, you know, a lot of modern products, you know, your iPhone, uh, your Samsung phone, whatever, whatever you got in your pocket there, um, it, it, it was made in a lot of different countries, right? A very complex product, right? So if the price uh, decreases, not like they're going to cut back on it a lot, right? Those production supply chains are uh, pretty elaborate, right? The computer I'm working on is, is, um, uh, you know, it's complex, but it's not as complex as, as say, uh, you know, a tiny miniature device. A, a yacht is going to be something like a rocket. Those are very complex things. They take a long time to produce. 
a cruise ship, things like that. Does the uh, seller have a time to, to respond? So in some cases, especially agriculture, you know, there's a growing season, right? Coffee is a good example. It takes three years for coffee to mature, right? And the, the beans that we will uh, enjoy every morning. So they, they have a much harder time changing their supply curve when the price changes, right? Whereas, you know, wheat has a shorter growing season. Uh, some firms, you know, little kids selling lemonade, very elastic supply curve. Uh, what's in your inventory? So if you have a lot of inventory, it's easy to change the supply. If you don't, uh, you have to make the product. It's a little bit harder. Whoops, and those are those are tend to be the four uh, main determinants for supply. So I suggest you stop the video and take a look at these guys and think about what is their supply elasticity. Okay, so they're more elastic supply, inelastic supply. And it has to do with all of this. Okay, I'm back after you pause the video. Hopefully you did. So farmers' crops, right? So um, if they're in a situation where it doesn't take very long uh, to produce, this tends to be a more elastic uh, supply curve. They can respond within a growing season, right? If the growing season's short, it's going to be very elastic. Collectible deals have, dealers have a more inelastic. Uh, supply curve because those collectibles are harder to get, especially for antiques or like the Honus Wagner baseball card. Used items, well, it kind of depends, right? Used clothing uh, has a very elastic supply curve. It's really easy to, to get. People donate it here in the United States. Uh, but if it's a used, um, you know, say used boat, uh, used cars tend to have a little bit uh, less elastic, especially in less developed uh, countries, right? NFL stadium, most NFL stadiums are around 70,000 seats, right? And they don't have the ability to add them more. The Dallas Cowboys or the Arizona Cardinals would be examples where they can add more when they have like the Super Bowl. But most of these stadiums, they, they're kind of tapped out at 70,000, and that's that's kind of where they stay. That's that's the definition there of, of inelastic supply, right? Uh, soda, soda is an extremely easy product to be very uh, cheap raw materials, very non-complex, very simple product, and I have lots of time to, to respond. There's tons of it in inventory. It's very elastic on the supply. Insurance is heavily regulated. This is one of the issues with uh, lowering insurance premiums here in the United States. Uh, it's regulated differently in each state. Different states require different things. Um, pretty relatively inelastic on the supply side. Uh, education, well, you're taking an online class and um, that and those online classes have flattened out and made it more elastic on the supply side. Same well, same with 3D printed goods. 3D printed goods are going to make more elastic supply, which is good if you're the consumer. Uh, may not be good if you're the producer. Okay, uh, and then we can graph all of these, right? So the, the combos of elasticity. So there are four things that you could end up with, and I'll uh, it says draw the combos on the board. So let me do that here. Can delete this whole thing. I don't know. Let's let's give it a shot. No. Okay. Well, we're just going to do this then. Okay. So we end up with four things, right? So basically, uh, it's four situations we can have, right? So we can have cash. Just want to be able to draw straight. Okay, that one works. Oh, look at that. All right. This first one, let's do a very inelastic demand curve and a very elastic supply curve or a relatively elastic supply curve. Okay, next, we'll do a pretty inelastic demand curve and we'll do a pretty area relatively inelastic supply curve we got our equilibrium price right there okay then next we've got relatively elastic demand curve that should be a little bit uh, well I don't know I mean that's kind of realistic actually uh, price and quantity and then we'll do a 
relatively elastic supply curve. So that's when they're both elastic. And then finally, the elastic demand curve and a relatively inelastic supply curve. Okay. So these are the combinations that, that you could end up with. Okay. So what I want you to do is in your notes uh, with those combinations, uh, go ahead and uh, see which one matches which, right? So which one would be best for consumers only? Which one would be best for producers only? College tuition, the drink lemonade, lemonade the Beyonce album, NFL tickets, right? So we just talked about the supply elasticity there and think about the demand elasticity and then uh, medical insurance in the, in the market that you're in. And uh, if you want to really be an all-star and think uh, think ahead and think how this might apply to your business, you know, you got that paper on the horizon and everything. Um, think about your industry, right? I'm going to see if I can write that there. Ooh, sort of. It, I don't know. It really, it's really cranky. So your career. Wow, wow. I know this thing works, but uh, so anyway. Uh, supposed to work. Okay, so that is supply elasticity and then its applications uh, beyond.